Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can use decision trees in R and uh, specifically for how you can use decision trees for classification. The agenda is basically broken down into three parts. So one, we'll take a look at what are decision trees um, and it's really not intended to be a very deep dive, um, you know, conceptual overview. It's really a, a kind of like a one minute overview of uh, what decision trees are if uh, you have not come across that in the past. Uh, then we'll spend the bulk of our time over demo where I'll be using the R part library um, and we'll go through a couple of demos and then finally we'll wrap up um, when we discuss around some of the limitations which you'll see as we go through the demo and a couple of considerations and alternatives to decision tree. So that's really the agenda. Um, feel free to um, click around on the video if you want to move ahead or skip certain sections. Uh, so first things first, um, what are decision trees? Um, so as I mentioned, it's um, this is not a very detailed overview of uh, decision trees itself. Um, so I'm best if you uh, want to take a look at Google and various other resources. But I just wanted to um, just emphasize on some of the terminologies and some of the core concepts that we will be using. Uh, so decision trees are probably one of the oldest and uh, one of the simplest but yet very, very useful machine learning algorithms that have been there for a long long time. Um, now the idea of a decision tree is that it can be used for broadly two purposes. Uh, one is for classification and the other is for regression. Um, regression is really about determining a, you know, a set of continuous numbers. So if you wanted to predict a number um, or uh, you know something numerical that's obviously when you use regression and um, classification is when you want to uh, predict the um, a class. Um, so that's what we're really going to be focusing on today. Uh, while some of these terminologies are used um, differently across different platforms and by different uh, data scientists and statisticians, uh, you'll, it's possible that you may have also come across the term uh, cart analysis. Uh, so that's basically combining uh, classification and regression tree analysis. So uh, the real concept I just wanted to highlight is around the tree itself and some of the terminologies that we might be using as we go through the demo. Uh, so uh, this is a, a simple example of um, um, the data from the Titanic uh, and it just uh, uses a simple uh, tree, a decision tree to showcase um, the categorical variable in this particular case if uh, the individual survived or not. And as you can see, um, it, like a tree structure, it comprises of uh, leaves and branches. Uh, so the leaves uh, basically reflect um, the class label itself and the branches uh, reflect the conditions. Uh, so think of um, uh, decision tree is really like a divide and conquer strategy, if you will, like the most prominent condition uh, being at the top. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Uh, the other way to think of it is, uh, you know, a ginormous glorified if then else if mega statements. Uh, but I'm probably oversimplifying it that way. Uh, so that's it for theory and background. Again, feel free to stop the video and look around for other resources um, uh, to know more about decision trees because uh, uh, the rest of the demo is really, uh, or this video is really focused around the demo. All right, so um, so let's dive in next uh, to the demo. And uh, in this particular case, I'm going to be using the R part library. Now R comes with uh, several packages. I think there's more than six or seven packages easily that um, uh, uh, that can be used to build decision trees. Like um, today we'll be seeing R part. Uh, there's the tree library, there's the map tree and several, several other libraries. Um, each library tends to have a slightly different way of um, uh, uh, you know, the internal algorithm used. Uh, so uh, chances are you will see slightly different uh, results um, and some variations between individual libraries. So uh, again, uh, feel free to look around, but today we are going to be taking a look at our part uh, library. Uh, so for us to get started, um, uh, we need a sample data set. Um, and again, I'm going to go back and resort to the iris data set. Uh, so uh, it's one of those uh, uh, simple out of the box um, data sets that you get with R. So it's just um, uh, four different uh, flaws, uh, actually three different flaws and um, against a couple of different attributes like length uh, and, and width of the petals and sepals. 
Um, so one of the first things we need to do is um, actually split this data so that we have um, a training data set and a testing data set. And um, you'll notice here in this example, they're, they're all grouped together. So I can't, uh, we need a more interesting way than just uh, say, for example, take the first 100 rows, for example. Um, so in order for us to get um, some sample to work with, so let's just say, for example, um, we have sample. Oh, by the way, I, I did not highlight. So here we have um, 150 uh, observations. So uh, we want to uh, get a sample from 150 numbers. We'll take 50 numbers. Um, all right. So if we go back here, oops. So that's a sample. Uh, so you can see here that um, we'll be running this uh, script a couple of times. So hence I'm writing it in a uh, separate script window, so uh, it gives us the opportunity to kind of uh, generate um, random numbers. Um, of course, if uh, there are much better alternatives to what I've just done. Um, then let's actually split the the data set into um, the iris data set into uh, uh, training and testing. So iris say train. We'll take iris and get that and all the columns. And similarly, we'll take a look at um, the training and finally the testing. Um, we'll get the reverse of that. So that should give us um, both the training and the test data. So then iris test. and we have the train right collectively it has given us all those uh, 150 numbers okay so now that we have the data let's actually use our part to um, actually uh, do build some decision trees so we'll need to include the library our part our part and uh, simple command here so now we want to work with uh, the the training data set um, you'll notice actually um, let me actually change that um, just bear with me a second we need more training data so I'm just going to increase that so that it's um, it's a hundred um, um, definitely want to increase the amount of data that you have in training um, so Okay, so where were we last? So let's actually use the R part um, function. So we're going to create a model, um, a decision tree model, um, decision tree model, say, and R part. Here we want to uh, predict the classification of species here. So let me just copy that species and uh, we want to utilize all the other variables oh. give me a second yep species tilde and uh, period which is really a shortcut um, otherwise I'd have to keep instead of uh, using a period the other alternative is uh, I have to um, copy all of this here and um, you know keep uh, adding a plus against each of these oops um, that's here uh, so whichever suits your fancy in in my case the data set basically I'm utilizing all the other remaining um, uh, you know uh, attributes there so I'm gonna use the shorthand and just uh, put a period there all right so that's the first parameter uh, we know that uh, we're gonna be utilizing the training data set here and uh, finally um, we want to do classification so method is equal to class Oops, uh, keyboard yep class all right so let's just run that yep that seems to run fine um, and now that we've uh, got the data we can um, you know visually inspect that data so let's say for example we 
want to see what's in here so DTM you'll notice it's a it's a very textual description um, and um, basically we had uh, 100 observations there uh, so it's um, it's giving you an idea in terms of uh, how the tree structure has been built the decision tree um, and you can see here's the legend uh, if you want to use that to follow what's um, what's been described here so basically it's uh, given uh, the condition and uh, what that uh, split is of that condition um, the error or the loss itself and finally it tells you uh, which of these are the leaf nodes uh, so the leaf nodes are where uh, it actually um, shows us the class labels and the others are purely just conditional uh, so here you can visually see that uh, there is some error uh, in how it's um, classified certain flowers. Uh, but that's a textual display. Um, we can uh, visualize it in much more graphical ways. Uh, uh, option number one is to use the, uh, the plot. Uh, but um, uh, it's not really the best in terms of visual appeal. So if, if you just use plot alone, it just... Uh, draws the, the decision tree uh, without uh, adding any of the text there. So you want to add text here. So here it's plotted against the text, but still it's um, it didn't do a very good job. So uh, the out of the box plots not very useful uh, when you're trying to uh, visually analyze the data. Of course, you can analyze the data directly from here. Uh, but that's where uh, one of the more powerful uh, features of the R part library is uh, its um, plotting capability. Uh, so we also have to utilize the, um, the uh, or include the R part plot. So that's the plot included that. And now we can actually run R part plot. Let me just copy that easier than typing. Um, and decision tree model so here it's uh, as you can see it's a much more visual um, uh, you know visually useful way for us to draw the tree and you can clearly see the conditions so uh, ev um, yes is always to the left and no to the right so here you can see uh, that it's actually use uh, the petal uh, the leaf uh, the length and the petal width as the two primary conditions to segment the three types of flowers um, there's uh, quite many other parameters that we can use here, so um, I'll let you um, look into it on your own, but um, I've spent some time looking at uh, uh, some of the attributes here, and you can see there's a, there's a range of uh, parameters that you can pass in here to uh, produce much richer, much more visually appealing um, plots of the tree. So I'll just give you an example. So uh, we're going to use uh, uh, the type of 4 here and uh, uh, under extra uh, we're going to use a different um, set of values here to come up with something a little more uh, visually appealing. So here yeah, as an example um, type is it four and uh, the other one was extra extra is equal to uh, 101 so these looked really good in my opinion uh, much better than what you get um, uh, without these parameters so just to explain here you can actually see um, the the actual percentages uh, and uh, also what's very helpful is it'll actually show you how, uh, if there were any errors like here it's um, accurately predicted uh, set soda but um, here you can actually see that um, it's uh, incorrectly predicted too so visually you can see right here in the tree um, so again uh, if uh, if you use other parameters uh, uh, it'll it allows you to basically tweak that um, uh, UI, if you will, and uh, have a play with uh, the plot functionality. So as you can see, uh, if, um, if I run it a couple of times using random numbers anyway, so it's actually um, giving you an idea of what that error conditions can be. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, last thing, uh, perhaps what we want to do is, uh, now that we've got a tree here, uh, we want to utilize that and uh, do some predictions. Um, so let's say predict, we want to use the, uh, the tree, the decision tree model that we have just uh, created. 
uh, we want to run it against um, uh, the test data set. So in the past, of course, we created the, the model using the training data. So this time we're going to be using uh, the test data. Uh, we're going to consider all rows there and uh, we want to use column five, uh, which is the category. Um, and then finally, um, the, the type uh, classification again. And we'll store that as a prediction, say. And uh, finally, uh, now that we've uh, got that prediction, uh, let's actually compare how uh, that fed the predictions against the actual uh, test value. So um, we can use the table function. So table, we're going to take this data set here. And let's actually see. So um, that's the actuals versus the, um, the predicted values. Ah, just uh, give me a second. I'll test. Did I miss something here? Okay, make sure that's correct. Predict. to have the same length. I oh, uh, just realized I, I made a mistake. Um, didn't have to specify this uh, column here. So let's uh, run that again. So that's a prediction. All right, so here we are. So in this particular case, uh, you can actually see that um, uh, what you have um, here is uh, the actuals and uh, the columns represent the predictions. So in in some cases you can see that it's uh, or in one case here it, there was an incorrect uh, prediction. Um, so there was uh, one error. Uh, so one out of uh, 50 um, is uh, the error rate. Uh, which isn't too bad, but then that again is a reflection of the sample of the data that we have uh, selected. So if I run this uh, again, so let's uh, um, let's see if it comes up with a different result. Uh, so here again, you can see because I've run the script again, it's uh, used a different sample. Uh, so here you can actually see that uh, this time around the error um, was uh, four four out of 50. So uh, again, um, you can see variations in the result. Um, so that's, uh, I think, an important thing you want to consider when you're using decision trees or for that matter, any uh, machine learning technique, particularly uh, when you're looking at uh, supervised learning techniques like this, uh, providing the right uh, training data or, uh, you know, a good representative training data is vital for the success of uh, your algorithm. So. What we've seen so far today, um, as you can see, is uh, just a really quick um, overview of uh, the decision trees and how you can implement decision trees uh, using R part. As I mentioned, there are several other uh, libraries uh, within R that you can use to create these uh, decision trees. Um, we've talked about some of the limitations. So again, you've seen in this example here today, um, uh, you know, how important it is to have a good representative uh, set for your training data. So um, the, the data that you feed into your training clearly, clearly influences um, the results that you get off your predictive models. Uh, now, decision trees by itself is uh, fairly simple, um, I, but uh, there are other ensemble techniques like, say, random forest and gradient boosted machines, uh, which uses uh, um, decision trees internally to uh, create much more uh, elegant and much more sophisticated uh, machine learning algorithms. But uh, we'll cover that in a future video. Uh, so that's a wrap for this one. So we have seen in today's video a simple example of how you can build decision trees. Uh, there are other advanced topics like how you can prune trees and various other optimizations which I hope to cover in a future video. Thanks everyone for watching.